This is awesome. All right. There are more chairs over here for anybody that needs a chair. Um, this is a great turnout. This is really, there's plenty of refreshments back there, so please help yourselves. Uh, we'll get this going so that uh, we can get out of here in a timely manner. Um, there's a few things I'd like to thank some, a few people first uh, before we get going. Uh, someone I'd like to thank is Jeff Mish, our lead custodian. Jeff is unbelievable. Uh, as you can see, our fields, they're being worked on. And so this you know, fall, we were at the elementary school. We're at the club. Jeff's over there lining them. He's all, his cross-country team is uh, at the Common. He's got a line all over the place. So he put in the extra effort. And I really want to give Jeff a nice round of applause. <laughs> Jeff has gone above and beyond and he's it's and it's for the kids he does it for the kids and he does it with a great a smile on his face and he has a great attitude about it i don't want this to go off jeff could you help me out here it's out back, it's out back. i just don't want it to like blow up uh, so jeff we really appreciate you i'd also like to thank eric sudnick and naomi goldstein um, being an athletic director and being at the elementary school, it's very hard to get a lot of things done over here. And Eric helps me out and Naomi. Um, the certificates and just anything administrative that I need, they're very, very helpful and always willing to help. And it's much, much appreciated. I'd also like to thank Aaron Tudrin and Erica Wenner who do the same thing. Erica was a site monitor for me. Air, um, Aaron Tudrin, at the end of the day, she would help get water and or whatever I needed. Uh, to help out to make sure the teams had what they needed. I'd like to thank our administration, Dr. Annie McKenzie and April Camuso, uh, the secretaries in both the central office and the high school office here, and of course the Booster Club for their continued support. Um, I hope I didn't forget anybody, but I probably did, but I'd also like to say uh, thank the coaches. This was a very challenging fall, I mean in a good way, uh, but the coaches, you know, between not knowing where they're going to practice, not knowing if they had a field to practice, um, you know, communicate. It's so much easier to be on campus here and have our fields, uh, if they were ready, to just go out and, and coach out here. But no, we were spread out. We were all over the place. Shuttle buses to and from. So there was a lot of things that went into the mix. And our coaches were unbelievable, cooperative, did whatever they needed to do to make it happen, and they do it all for the kids. So without further ado, we're going to start out tonight with the uh, JV Boys Soccer, Coach Filio, and then we'll go into the Varsity Soccer, JV Boys Soccer. Thanks, Fred. I just want to reiterate what Fred just said with how out of a season it was, and I want to thank Freddie on what he did for organizing everything, making sure that all the players had bus rides, had field space, um, making sure the teams, when there was games over there, make sure we had practice over at the club. Um, it was not an easy, easy year to navigate by any means. And again, thank you, Mr. Mitch, for lining the fields and keeping them up to date. Um, we can't have a season without the work that these guys do behind the scenes. So. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Jeff. The kids, I really appreciate everything you guys do for us. Um, I also want to thank uh, the coaches. Um, we only had two fields to work on this year, so I want to thank Coach Feliz for sharing a field with me, sharing drills with, with, with me, um, letting me run the girls, because I love running with me. So just being able to share the fields, share each other's uh, ears, talk about how to manage kids, manage games, things like that. Um, by working closely on the fields, I think everyone benefits from what we do. And we see different views of players, how the games work. So being able to work closely with Coach Feliz and Omar and uh, Vinny here, it it's benefits the program overall. So thank you guys for everything. Now onto the players. Um, I want to commend them for 
the year that we had and being able to show up at practice, getting dropped off at the fields at 2.40 when I wasn't going to be there until 3.10. And when you drop 20 boys off at a field, anything can go wrong, <laughs> all right? But this group of boys, this group of players, young men, were get to the field, they would do their run, they would do their stretch, they would get everything going before I even showed up to the field. So I want to thank the leaders of the team for making sure this happened every day so when I got there, we could just go straight into training. Um, the kids were left unsupervised for half hour every day. No, they weren't. Or not unsupervised. <laughs> okay. When I showed up, I didn't see any other adults there. <laughs> Um, and when I did show up, I had a group of kids almost every day, Tony, EJ, Brody, Santiago, they'd come running out to my truck and grab the equipment from me. So that's the little things that I appreciate. So thank you guys for being helpful all year and not having to be asked to do those things. Um, a little bit about my season, you know, we started out 0-2. Lost the game, 4 nothing, 3 nothing, And I, you know, was looking back on last year where we won one game and thinking, do I want another season like that? What can we do? What can the players do? And, you know, we made some adjustments. I went from a 4-4-2 to a 4-3-3 just to be able to manage players, game time, things like that. So I know you guys all followed my season very closely, so you know all this already. But... From after that first two games, we went eight wins, zero losses, and four ties. So that wasn't because of what I did. It's because of the kids. They didn't want to have the same season we had last year. They wanted to put the work in. They did put the work in. The leaders of the team were able to mon uh, mentor the younger kids. We supported each other. Um, there was absolutely zero fighting within the group good attitudes all around and I think that really goes to the leadership of the team not me it goes to the players that were with me last year and know what I expect and you know it was just it made the year that much more enjoyable to be able to have that leadership on the field and be able to count on those players and to bring the bring up and support the kids that may not have had um, all the experience that they have previously. So thank you to all the leaders of the JV team. Um, then I just got a couple stories that I want to say that I thought were, I found funny. So one time we're up in Gateway and we made a play where it went outside to inside, back to the outside and we got a cross off. And then it, Kid on the bench looks at me and goes, Coach, Coach, we do that in practice. I'm just like, I know. That's why we do it in practice. So it's like seeing that click with this kid, like, okay, Coach isn't there just to make us run or make us do drills just for the hell of it. It's because these are applicable to games. And when the kids see that, it makes them want to come to practice more and have the energy and put the energy into the drills because they know it's going to apply to the games. So that, that's just something I, that stuck with me this year. Um, another one was, let's see, where are we? Uh, oh, I was sitting here waiting for a kid to be picked up. Um, his parents were running a little bit late and I was talking to him. It was his first time playing soccer this year. And I'm like, so how are you liking it? You know, what do you like about it? What don't you like? He looks at me and goes, coach, I ran cross country last year. I didn't think there'd be this much running in soccer. So I, I, I just smiled. I'm like, you obviously didn't talk to anyone from last year because if there's one thing I really enjoy, it's the fitness of soccer, the running, and being able to get on that field and run up and down the field for 80 minutes straight. So he, he was a little shocked that we, we kept running and running all year. So. Um, so I would like to call up all the JV players and give them their certificates. So please come on up.
Yeah, one. Oh, no, here, I'm going to announce the names. You can just hand it. Spencer By. Owen Kane. Jason Campbell. Saram Chaudhry. Matthew Feltovic. Emmett Forbes. Jasper Gorman. Muti Hafiz. No Muti? Dylan Hughes. Eli Jekinowski. No Jekinowski? Edward Knightley. EJ. Ari Lewis. Tony Medinsky. Matthew Mashinsky. Brody Palmazano. Eli Rellin. Talon Salgado. Ian St. Hilaire. Mason St. Hilaire. And then other ones that aren't here are Santiago, Hernandez, and Steven Song. Thank you guys. I appreciate everything this year. Yep, I will. I'm going to have them come back up. So I also have three awards to hand out. And my awards go for things I, I really hold dear to myself and the way I was brought up. And one of them is, the first one is the Hustle Award. Um, I really like how kids hustle, put the work in, and just go out there and get the job done. So this player, he didn't say much all year. He might have not even talked to me for the first three quarters of the year. Um, he had a great attitude, and he gave it his all every day. Um, he became a fan favorite. He had a never-quit attitude. Um, he was 100% every day on the field. And a lot of the parents even came up to me after games and said, I love watching this kid play. So, because he just doesn't stop. He doesn't let his size be a detriment. I had him play up front one game against a guy that was six foot three. Just, just so I could see him run around this guy and just hound him as he's uh, dribbling the ball up. So my hustle award goes to Tony Badinsky. Thank you, Tony. Since I was a coach last year, I decided to do a most improved player so I could see how the players grow from year to year as they're with me. And this player came in and he was, came in in the best shape that I've seen a kid that his age come in. Um, he was top three in this, uh, running uh, distance. He was top three in sprints each week. He came to me after every practice, every game, every drill. Um, whenever he came out of games, he'd always come up and be like, hey coach, how'd I do? Hey coach, what can I do better? And just the work that he put in and his constant asking me for advice on what to do to get better, really, it really showed this year. And you know, Jasper, you really were the be most improved this year. The Sportsmanship Award, um, this could go to any one of the players I felt were leaders this year. Um, 
there was a lot of them that took to heart the success of this team. They'd come to me before practices, during games, and just talk to me about either drills that they want to do or how we can get certain people more focused on the drills. And it was the same group of kids, and I wish I could give this award to all of them, because um, they took it upon themselves to get the kids started or get the team started every day. They would work to you know, encourage other kids, be, support kids as they're doing the runs. And it was just one of those things where you know, I had a great group of leaders on this team that, like I said, I really appreciated and I really encourage um, what they did. Um, I would encourage that from everyone. But there was this certain group that really stood up, stood out. Um, the Sportsmanship Award is going to a player that played probably almost every position for me this year. He, except goalie, he wherever I put him, he played 100%, tried his best. He was defense, offense. I had him on wing, and he just went out there every day and you know looked to do what he could to make the team better. And he came in with a great attitude. Being an older kid, he could have come in and been like, well, I'm not on varsity. I don't care anymore. And he, he was one of the kids that just kept stepping up throughout the year. And there was a whole lot of them that did that. So um, being with me this year, I think, helped him grow as a leader and grow as a person. So Talon Salgado, this year, you're the Receive the Sportsmanship Award. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, next up, boys varsity soccer, Coach Omar. Everybody, uh, my name is Omar. Let me see if I can pull this. Give me a second. I hope you guys are doing well. So I know uh, I stand in a privileged place here to be the coach of the varsity team. Uh, I know in the past we've had CJ, Coach Justin. So you know this is either the beginning of a new tradition or a very funny joke. So <laughs> we'll see how it's going to go. Um, as a coach, um, I often think about this question. Um, I currently work in a clinical office, a clinical assistant. And there are two things that I often hear in my head over and over. Um, one of them is the names of medications, sertraline, losartan, amlodipine, Lugovi, the list can go on. The other one that I hear so much in my head these past few weeks is the word coach. Something I loved hearing so much. Coach, can you help me out with this? Coach. Could I play? Coach, that was a funny joke. OK, maybe not that one. Um, but it's something that I become so blessed to hear often over and over. And it's something I'm going to miss so much. Um, so that was something about this season. I also want to take a moment to talk about the seniors, because they know that on senior night, I was supposed to go up, say something. And I got a little emotional and couldn't say it. So I want to speak quickly to them and about them now. Um, I want to start off with James Fitzgibbons, who when I think about the first word that comes to my mind is, you know, a cheerful smile. Someone who's always upbeat, ready to go, makes you want to come to work because it's so fun being around him. Um, James came in not playing a lot of soccer, he's more of a basketball guy, and did wonderful this season. He got injured, but he played really well, and we depended on him so much, so James. Good to you, my man. <laughs> then you have the amazing writer. When I think of writer, I think of captain, leader, someone I could depend on in the good and the bad moments, and someone who taught me personally what it meant to stand for your ideas, even when others didn't agree with you. He was so good at that, and he was so confident. It shows he's got a great support system, and it shows the confidence he's got in himself. Uh, writer, we're so lucky to have you as a captain, man. We're gonna miss you, my man. Okay. 
Then I have someone called Trey, the amazing Trey number 10. Trey and I share a similar background in terms of growing up and where we came from. And um, if you want an example of resilience, going through hardships and becoming someone so, becoming a man at such a young age, that's, that's the definition of Trey. Trey is my brother and there's not much more you can really say about your brother except I love you, man. Appreciate you, Trey. Then you have the amazing Dom. Coach Justin used to call him the Dominator, wherever Coach is. Um, what can you say about Dom? When I started coaching, I went to a coaches meeting with all the coaches in the state. And I remember them telling me, Coach, you gotta know that you got some, you got some kids who will run through the wall for you. And that's the definition of Dom. Dom did everything for me and for the team. We were so lucky to have him. He's not the tallest, but he's definitely the tallest in effort. Um, and respect, and I mean that truthfully, I mean that as someone that uh, we, we're all really lucky to know, the Dominator, so love you, Dom. <laughs> and then, last but not least, of course, Carter, uh, my brother Carter. Carter is someone who I remember vividly, we were playing against, um, I believe, Granby, and we had gotten a goal scored against us in a way that wasn't the best. And everyone had kind of moved up. Everyone was really angry about perhaps the mistake that was done. And I remember seeing to the side Carter talking to our goalkeeper, you know, let's go, man, let's get up. So and that's the type of person Carter is. He cares about his teammates, always smiling, always bringing a positive energy, and someone that you just love being around. So much appreciation, Carter. <laughs> Yeah, so we're gonna start calling out names. Uh, how it's gonna be done is I'm gonna ask Coach to say the names in the microphone and then I'm gonna hand it out to them. And then afterwards we'll speak about the awards and then, okay? Alex West. Neil McFarlane. Lucas Silva. Max Watowitz. Nicholas Ukni. Chase Simonich. Nathan Rickles. Leedson Miranda. <laughs> Benjamin Kajusko. <laughs> Andrew Jekanowski. Chase Earl. Austin Dizak. Nicholas Kane.
Logan Bai. James Anderson. James Fitzgibbons. Ryder Gallo. Tresor Akimama. Dominic Aloisi. <laughs> Carter Whitney. Keep you guys up for a few seconds. So this season, it was a great season because we started implementing a new type of style, a new game. And I'll tell you that one of the great compliments I got this season was uh, from a principal who used to play soccer in college. And she came up and told me, you were one of the very few teams, if not the only team I've seen play at the college level with the style you're trying to implement. So another round of applause for these guys who did something new and did well. I want to start off the first award, the Team Dedication Award. Um, I feel like the guys may have an idea of who this is going to go to. When I think of the word team, this is the person who comes to mind. Someone who put it out all for the team, did everything for the team, got injured, kept playing for the team, was there for us, always helped us in all the good and bad moments. And there's someone that I really recommend you guys talk to when you get the chance because he's a great person besides the soccer. So I want to dedicate this team dedication to Mr. Nick Ugbee. All right, next award is an award um, most improved player. Uh, I want the guys to think about who this award goes to the most improved player this year. Um, for me, this player displayed the attributes of coming in, not playing a lot, to being a starter and playing with our style and playing the small details, how to control a ball, how to pass a ball. He gave us a lot of confidence when he played. And he did get injured, but when he came back, he scored a game. And this goes to James Fitzgibbons. Last but not least, the Most Improved Player Award. This is a hard award because we had a few really, really decent, amazing, pristine players. The one advantage or edge that this player had over others, I think, was his heart, his motivation, and always playing, even when we were down. And I think that's what really made it for him. But he was the central player to our team and how to get the ball and transition forwards and how to control the possession and pace and try to score goals. Um, MVP goes to Dominic Aloisi. Alright, last award, again, not last but not least. This is one of my favorite awards, probably the favorite award, which is the Sportsmanship Award. Um, someone who I had it down was a person, of a, a role model on and off the pitch someone who was a mentor to his teammates, and someone who really focused on the betterment of one's team. Um, I couldn't think of anyone else but Carter Whitney. And if we can get one more round of applause for Varsity Boys. Thank you, Coach. Okay, up next, we're going to go into golf with Coach Mark Crodel. Oh, 
Hello. Would the golf team come on up, please? Golf team, come on up. Thank you. Yeah, I think I got it figured out. All right. Well, half the guys half on this side, half over there. So I just want to let everybody know that we had we had a very good season this year. We had a great turnout with uh, 12 players, <clears throat> a great mixture of golfers, hockey players, and baseball players. <laughs> if that's what we needed. This has been the ninth season that I've done this, and uh, this is probably the best team we've had. So take really appreciate it, guys. So just to just to also tell us that we had a 10-win season, second place in Western Mass, and we went to the state team tournament. So, good year. So the first award I have uh, Jessica, you here tonight? Okay. Riley Regan. <clears throat> Welcome. Tyler. <laughs> Team captain. Great job. Thank you. Siddharth. There you go. Thank you. Yuki. There you go. Julian. There you go. Liam? Jack? There you go. Uh, Laney? Yep. Christian? JB? And Cooper. Nice job. So we also have some other awards. Um, first off, we had uh, a meeting the other day, and we had three elected to the uh, All League, which was Riley, Liam, and JB. So the most improved golfer this year, everyone improved. But, but this was obvious from when I first saw his swing in uh, August until where he ended up with the team, and it's JB. Good job. Next I have the Leadership Award. Just, he did a great job for us, is Liam. And our team MVP, which is no surprise, is Riley. There you go. And we have a, a sportsmanship award. We have two, uh, two getting this award tonight. It's Tyler and Christian. There you go. Thank you. That's got to be the quickest of all time right there. Now we go with cross country, Coach Mish. my cross country team just give me a wave I'm gonna do this just for you speed day 
That, that was their favorite words, the hardest day of the week when we would go out onto the common. And uh, unlike Coach Filio, who said it wasn't all about running, my sport is all about running. And we love Speed Day. Um, we got off the bus uh, in East Hampton at one of our meets, and the uh, coach saw us and said, wow, you're really small in numbers. And most of the teams that we participated against this year, this Frontier in particular, there, it was like a clown car. They just kept coming off the bus. It was unbelievable. Um, we had a total of 11, uh, I guess we'd call them players, runners. Um, but at the end of the race, the coach came up and said, you are small in numbers, but you are mighty in spirit. And, and that was a... <laughs> that was the truth. Cross country is, is uh, not to put anybody else down here. It's, it's tough. It's one of the toughest sports out there because it's your heart, your mind, and just to push through it. You can't take a break. You can't rely on your teammate to maybe cover for you while you catch your breath. You just have to do it. And they did it, and they do it. And year after year, I'm amazed. It's the best part of my day. Watch these kids just grow and from the hottest day of the summer to it seems like the coldest day in the fall. Uh, push, push through and, and succeed. Um, the, the, the year was a success. We did most meets. We didn't have enough members to score. You need five to score, and most meets we had injuries. That's what happens in cross country. So, but individually, everybody improved, and on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we beat most everybody. Um, we had a new course this year, um, and hopefully this will be our final move. Um, we're on the common, on the north end, we run down the common, we get on the dike, trace the river, take the left turn on the dike, and come back on the, on the bikeway. Uh, the teams that ran this course, they love this course. It's flat and fast, and I think uh, this will be our new home going forward. Um, unless something changes. Uh, and I looked at Fred and I just, I meant to say this right at the beginning. Um, and I can get away with a lot of stuff now because I'm probably one of the oldest people in this room. And I'm looking out and I'm seeing the young faces, but I'm not talking about the students, I'm talking about the parents. <laughs> and I look at Fred and you're the fourth uh, athletic director that I've burned through. Uh, <laughs> He's, and he's the first one that's as torqued as I am, so I'm not sure how this is gonna go going forward. Um, and I just, I just, Fred and I are working on these fields out there, and I'm pleading for me, and mostly for him, though, to, to give us a break. Weekly, we, we meet about these fields, and um, weekly there's a surprise. We're trying to get you know, the spring sports in on these fields. We're pushing for it, uh, but if it doesn't happen, blame somebody else other than me and Fred. <laughs> um, so, as everybody knows who's seen me at these events over the years, uh, I, I really don't know my teammates' real names. The first day I give them a, a nickname and and that's it. And then the only time I use their real name is tonight. So I have to use a paper to remember their, their real name. Uh, so <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, uh, Jay's Chase, I'm calling her a purse, uh, is a senior. And she got a new nickname this year. That's a rarity, but that happened. She turned into to Commander. She's uh, applying uh, to the Coast Guard Academy. And I'm going to be giving her her physical fitness test next year. And she is the third of the long line of runners I've had. Um, all of them outstanding, all of them fantastic people. And Jace Chase is a senior, so that's it for you. Come on over here. <laughs> uh, next senior, Aurora Borealis. 
she is not here, another senior. Uh, as I'm going through this, uh, I guess I'm gonna recruit right now as I begin this because we're gonna be down to only four runners next year. That's not good, we have to recruit. So um, I never wanted to touch the golf team, but they got enough numbers, so I'm going after the golfers too this year. <laughs> golfers, soccer players, band members, I, recruiting in a gym class, anybody. I'm looking for runners, we gotta have runners, we need runners, we wanna keep this program alive. There's ebb and flows in all, all the programs, so we're gonna, we're gonna get it. And as another aside, um, we're starting the uh, park and rest rec race where we did the Helping Hearts race at the elementary school. The park and rec is gonna sponsor it this year. It's gonna be <laughs> the famous run for the hot dog. It's gonna be 5K, we're gonna use the same course. Hopefully we can get the younger kids involved. All you high school kids, even if you weren't on cross country and come out and run, we're gonna, we're gonna get it going. You're gonna get a free hot dog at the end of that race because we're all about health on the cross country team and runners. Uh, and Chris Rex, uh, our, one of our senior runners, uh, is heavily involved in, in that run. So we're gonna come out and we're gonna get the program back to the big numbers that we like. Um, next is uh, Izzy here, Izzy Salad. No, okay. Uh, how about Rye Morgan, is she here? No, okay. Emily Kane, seventh grader. Emily Candy Kane. Emily uh, came on the scene and it, it, she just improved and improved. And it was funny, it, I, I wanna give you that book, the, the little engine that said, I think I can, I think I can, because Emily can, but she kept saying, I can't go. We would do the runs and I could only go this far and I can only go that far, but we wanna go all the way over the bridge. For the seventh graders, that's a long run already. You're two miles out as a seventh grader. That's, that's big if you don't have a lot of background in cross country, and even if you do. And one day, Emily said, I think I can, and she did. And, and that's the spirit that is pushing her forward. She really improved and had an excellent season, and I'm so proud of her. And going forward, she's gonna be part of the program that's gonna move us forward. Um, and then on the uh, boy side, is Jackson here? Jackson Graham, senior? Is uh, Grant lost and found? Nope. Uh, I know Jack. The Oreo is here. Jack says. <laughs> Jack's uh, first love has been baseball, but I think I'm getting him to change his first love to cross country. Jack came on really strong at the end of the year. It was this last meet we had uh, um, to qualify for states. Jack didn't qualify for the states this year, but as an eighth grader, he put on a performance that really wowed me. It was, he had a little bronchitis during the season, and after he shook that deal off, he just tore it up. And I might, he's the Oreo, and that's a long story how that, and not the cookie, but the bird from the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> and uh, we might change his, name to uh, Pants on Fire because he ran that race like his pants were on fire. <laughs> so I'm thinking of changing that nickname to Pants on Fire. And then uh, we've got Deegan Austin Dietz, seventh grader, and his nickname is, he, he's, he's the machine, first practice out. He, he's like a machine, he just bursts out. You can't slow this guy down, you can't stop him. At one practice, we had uh, one of the older runners run with a stick. He had to stay behind the stick, but the machine burst right through the stick. If we could put a knob on him for uh, control speed. Um, another seventh grader who's gonna be part of the program, growing the program, bringing it back. Uh, he competed and improved, and these two guys right here, and they just, I saw them out running today, yesterday. The season's over, but they wanna keep it, and I know they've signed up for some races. Um, okay, there's two people here that I haven't mentioned yet and I want to bring them up together because this is the real face of the program that we've had for the last few years. And that would be Chris the Dinosaur Rex and Capriel. 
microwave. Di Bartolomeo. Got it. <laughs> okay. So these have been my captains for the last couple of years. Um, and actually my co-coaches for the last couple of years. Chris is leaving. Thank goodness the microwave is st still with me. Somebody to keep me on a straight and narrow. Um, Chris is so valuable to the program. And he, he's like the bridge from when we started till now and going forward. I remember Chris as a seventh grader shaking down all the seniors to borrow money to go to Cumbies. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he never paid him back because yesterday he said, hey coach, can I buy my uniform? And I, you can't buy a uniform, Chris. And then I was thinking, where's he got all that money from? And it was those, those early years, seventh and eighth grade, he never paid those guys back. <laughs> they had his picture over at Cumbies. You know, he was customer of the month, he was there. <laughs> It's true, it's true. It's Chris, I, I, can't, I can't say enough about Chris. I mean, words, how valuable he's been to the program, to the team. He never came with a cloud over his head, always had an idea, always was excited, ready to go. We used to use him as the pace car. We would bring him out, I'm thinking, how fast should we make the team go today? Well, let's make Chris run and see how fast he does, and then we'll make everybody go a little slower, but then, well, let's make Chris go a little faster and see how he does. And then let's make Chris run three times around and then let's all join him after and see if we can pass him up. And he did it. He did it with a smile. Uh, we tried to get Chris, he tr we tried to get him into the States this year so he could drive that bus home at one time. Uh, I think he's related to COVID because he got it again a couple of weeks before the meet. And I mean, if the meet was this weekend, I'm telling you, Chris, you were this close. Well, he, he was the fastest runner at that meet with COVID. But you were over, right? You were done. <laughs> um, so I just, Chris is fantastic. And uh, we're going to miss him. The program's going to miss him. But he's already got a couple of races lined up in the next couple of weeks. We'll be going head to head at the hot chocolate race. Oh, boy, can't wait. Uh, so that's about Chris. <sighs> and then my other captain. She's still with us, uh, two-time state qualifier, Capriel. That's the last time I'm using that. This is the microwave, okay? She is the microwave. She just works, and, and both of these guys, the way they have to work independently, when you have the larger team, you know, you can group with people, and, and you can run, and you can work, and, and it, it, things are easier. But when you have to go out day after day and just beat yourself, push yourself and there's nobody, I'm on the bicycle, but I'm all over the place and uh, the, we're all spread out and they do it. And Capriel is such an example of just hard work, independent hard work. So here's the story. And this, this story is, is a story worth listening to, <laughs> of all my stories. She had qualified for the States two years in a row and based on her time, she won our meets four times overall this year, was the winner overall, four times, second place, I believe, two times. So she had the credentials, she, had the, she was there. I had actually bet her a million dollars, which now she had called me on, I'm supposed to pay if she didn't make it. But she did make it, that's the sad part. She won't be going Saturday. <laughs> they broke the divisions into three, A, B, C. We were in the C division, we had 60 teams. The other two divisions had 30 teams apiece. Um, she didn't, the way it's sort of complicated, but she didn't make the top 10 independent runners in our division, only because our division was stacked by the numbers. In the other two divisions, A or B, she was in easily. We worked uh, with the local, uh, coordinator, then we went to the state to pursue it to change the rule because it, it wasn't fair. She's faster than, I'm not, not half of the runners, but many of the runners that are going to the state, she's faster than. But it's a win, it's a big win, and it probably doesn't feel like it to her now, and it doesn't feel like it to me now, but it is because through this and through what we've done a, as a school and uh, they're going to change their ruling. They're going to change it so that the times 
in each division are going to be weighted and they're going to be calling it a wild card. So next year, somebody with her time is going to be in the race, and that's going to be the microwave Capriol rule because she pushed it, she pursued it. She, she wrote a letter that, that we included when we, we uh, went to the state, you know, to, for our case. And her letter, she's a wordsmith. She's a natural. If you're running for president, you want her writing the speeches. It was a powerful letter. It was an excellent letter. It was impactful, but they wouldn't change the rule for this year, but they're going to change the rule for next year, and there's never going to be another microwave that misses out. So it was a bigger win, actually, for her than making the race this year. Thank you for that. Okay, so then, let's see, we've got uh, some individual awards here, and I'll give them to the folks that are here. Um, First, we've got Jace Chase, the commander. She gets the Sportsmanship Award because Jace Chase, and this is a big deal award because sportsmanship, ethics, and integrity, which she has all three. The only thing is sometimes she lets me go, and I think she sort of encouraged me to be a little bit goofier than I really am, although I am pretty goofy. The other kids try to tone me down a little bit. She's sort of playing on me, get me even kookier than I am. Uh, she's great. She's moving on, and she's going to do well on her test next week, and she's going to be in the Coast Guard and driving a big boat down the Connecticut River and giving us all free rides, I hope. <laughs> um, let's see. And then Emily, Emily is here, and Emily gets the Most Improved Award. And as I said, Emily said that she couldn't do it, but she could do it, and congratulations to Emily for that. Thank you. And then we've got Deegan the Machine, and, and he, like I said, we're going to put a knob on him, slow him down in parts of the race so then he can complete the whole race awesomely, and he gets Rookie of the Year Award. <laughs> and then we've got uh, Pants on Fire, I think we're going to, we're going to go with that one. <laughs> And pants on fire, what, Oreo, we're gonna, we'll discuss which one you like better. He gets the uh, Sportsmanship Award, and the same thing, just good all around integrity, ethics, everything. And Jack, just stand right there for a second. I, I made a decision a, a few years ago, and I, I had an eighth grader as a captain, which was, a, was pretty young, and that would be microwave, and that worked out fantastic. So tonight, Jack, you, since this man is leaving, are the captain on the boys' team next year. Congratulations, for that. <laughs> and then I've got uh, two more awards here for these two. And they've got it before, and it's the MVP award, and they're getting it again, but it's not the most valuable player award anymore. It's the most valuable People Award. You guys are the most valuable people. Thank you. MVPs. And I got more, but I think I overstayed my time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're doing pretty good on time, so I'm going to just say, add to a little bit about what Jeff said. Um, first of all, we do the, the race that, uh, well, the route that Jeff picked running along the dike is just absolutely beautiful. And I've had a number of uh, athletic directors and coaches either email or just see me and tell me that their teams absolutely love running down and seeing the Connecticut River and then coming back on the uh, bike path. And it, it was just a fantastic course. So yes, that's going to be our new course if, if that's what you want. Uh, and the other thing is, I just have a total appreciation for uh, cross-country runners now. Uh, I really don't like running myself, but I went over to one of their meets, and I was on the Common, and they were playing Frontier. 
and Frontier did. They had a number of, uh, they probably had 30 kids out there. And we started running and they went out and did their run and it was a very, very hot day. And one of the Frontier runners, probably the first or second one, came running through uh, the finish line and I was standing right there and she kind of just stopped and her eyes started like rolling, this is no lie, rolling back in her head and Jeff probably, and she like all of a sudden like half fainted and fell on the ground. So I was like a nervous wreck. I ran over to their coach and I'm like, coach, coach, your girl's on the ground. He honest, he turned and looked at her and just said, oh, she'll be fine. And I'm like, Are you, I swear. And so I'm like, what is going on? And then their net, one of their next friends was Capril's sister comes running across the line and she drops down on all fours and vomits right in front of me. And no lie. And I'm yelling, someone, I'm like, help her, someone help her. And her mother comes over and goes, oh, she'll be fine. And puts a napkin on, and I'm like, are you kidding me? This is so, they ran in the hottest days. I mean, those early hot days that we had, but I have a total appreciation for it and I also, have a total appreciation for the job Jeff does with all his duties that he does here. He fits it in and it, the, his enthusiasm, as you can tell, and the kids enjoy it and it's just fun to be around. So we do want to grow the program. So let's get some of these younger kids out here and get them running. All right, next up, we're gonna go with Coach Feliz and the JV Girls Soccer. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, honestly, I gotta say, starting off, uh, thank you to Fred, Chris Katana, a couple others. I genuinely did not think about six months ago I'd, I'd, I'd be up here again. Um, some of you know a little bit of my story. I wasn't supposed to be out here. Uh, I was supposed to move, and I'm really glad it didn't because I had another opportunity, and I can't thank everyone enough, especially the families, former players, and particularly these two fine young gentlemen. When I said, hey, <laughs> I called Coach Catania saying, I'm not leaving anymore. I'm actually going to stay. Is there any chance that coaching position is still open? Because I know a lot of folks were, were gunning for it. And he said, call Fred. Reached out. And the fact that they're like, yeah, you can come on back. Um, it was what a wonderful opportunity. And sometimes you don't get second chances. And I can't be more thankful for being able to have a second chance. So thank you, players and families, and especially those folks and everyone here at Hopkins for that. Um, I want to also thank the other coaches. I know some of them get to echo it, and I want to echo it again. Every time I'm out there with them, it's just nothing but pride and being students of the game. And I think that's one of the biggest things. You know, there's anyone can go out there and tell someone, hey, you should do this, you should do that. But like genuinely learning and knowing what's going on, but what should happen for each person is really difficult. I was listening to something the other day, and it was talking about when it comes to being a coach, the best coaches find what individuals need most. And that's really hard with teams. It's really hard. And these incredible human beings up here and other folks out <laughs> right now in front of me are doing that every single day. So I can't thank them enough. Omar for just always reminding me for being a class act. Omar is a huge class act. I'm always reminded of that when he's with the boys. Coach Filio, as you mentioned before, us splitting fields, and one of the wonderful things about that is it was never a, oh no, you can't have this, you can have that. It's like, hey, how do we make this work? Hey, what are you doing today? How can we incorporate that? Because at, at the end of it, I remember talking to some parents, like we're a Hopkins team, and if we can keep finding ways to build that, and I know I'm always huge on it, especially for the boys and for the girls and for all others, just we have to work together. There's, I don't know how else we're going to do all this if we can't work together. So sharing ideas. There's so many bus rides. I'm like, hey, I don't know what to do here. Um, what should I do with this? I'm thinking this. I'm thinking that. And just having a sounding board. And so Coach Filio for being able to split the field, allow me to help out, but also learning from him. It's just been a huge, huge win for me. And that goes on to the next person, which is Coach Catania. And Coach Catania and I kind of go a little bit back going into college. And every time seeing him in college, just understanding how much of a workhorse he was and how dedicated he was. And one of the biggest things I always get from Coach Catania is this ability to just be a sounding board, to be a mentor. I've said this, um, although we are the same age and even some others, whether older or younger, it does not matter how old you are to have a mentor and role model. And I say to him all the time, I generally feel like he is a role model when I think about the sport of soccer and just being an overall human being. So I can't thank him enough. And I also can't thank Coach Erica Winner 
who kind of came in and just supported, right? Not up here, but when we said, hey, we could use somebody else, and I'm huge on this, and we talked about as a coaching staff was, you know, representation matters. And so having another female up there for our females to get to see is huge. And so Coach Winter, I can't thank you enough for being up there with us too. Favorite part about coaching is seeing people do things they once thought they couldn't do. And that was huge for our JV team because every single year is a similar pattern. We're getting new folks coming to play, so folks who played for a while and somewhere in between. And there are still so many people who are like, I can't do this. We're not going to do that. And the, it kept going on the entire season. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. And what was so incredible was that once there was either a win, but it was the wins before the games. It was that we prepare. Did we do what we said we were going to do? Were we being a good teammate? Were we being a good person? Being a good daughter? Being a good, just a human being? Did we win those moments? And it was so awesome getting to see that and seeing them develop themselves and believing in themselves. Huge on that. And although it's not happening anytime soon, but I genuinely will say this as with everything else I'm mentioning, coaching this JV girls team with our players who are now up in varsity and the current players generally makes me a better person and prepared whenever that day comes to be a father. And I can't echo that enough because every single time I'm with them is another opportunity with each individual player on how to be a better parent. And not everyone gets that opportunity, so I can't thank them enough, these young ladies, for allowing me that opportunity every single day to be a better person, be a better coach, but more importantly, for some folks down the road, be a better father. Seventh and eighth graders playing mostly, whoa, playing mostly against 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. That is not easy by any stretch of the means. I think if the only team that maybe had a couple of 7th and 8th graders was when we played Frontier. But other than that, we played some really high-level games against some teams who are just generally more mature, have more, again, just have more skill, but because they're much larger. Again, you, if you saw us play, seeing Daniela or Avery play against an East Hampton player, like there is a huge size difference. And both of them, like our other players, completely did everything they could in those moments to make the most of it, regardless of the size difference. And that's always been so awesome to see, not just of those two players, but so many other players, that they genuinely are trying to fight, regardless of how old they are, how, how big, how strong, whatever it is. But it's not just what's physical, it's everything that's mental, which is amazing. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of this team. There's definitely some moments, and they see it. I think it's because of the high expectations and standards I have that even after games, I'm like, oh, man, I wish we got to do this. And I was talking about it with Coach Katan when we were playing against um, our, one of our last games. I was like, yeah, you know, I wish it was this. And he's like, no, they play, like, really well. And I, like, stop back. I'm like, yeah, you know, they actually really did. And, of course, they always do. But when you get to stop and slow things down a little bit, like, this team had done some remarkable things not just out on the field, but internally on the practice field, which is huge. What you do with what happens is a statement of who you are as a person. And that is a testament to all of our young girls and our older girls, and I can't thank them enough. And so as I'm going up here, and if Coach Tana can just pass these out, i just like to call the entire JV team, including our swing players, to come on up. And please just stand over here as I read this out. So I'm going to say a word, and I did this a little bit last year, and I loved it. I'm going to say a word that reminds me of each player as I call their names out. Caring, and this is for Saya Coa Rodriguez. <laughs> Grit, Cassie Dion. Goofy, Kaylee Edwards. <laughs> Dedication, Avery Filio. <laughs> Growth, Sienna Formetta. <laughs> Class, Haven Jones. Workhorse, Kylie Kinchla. <laughs> Support, Callie Regish. <laughs> A 
although she's not here, Hope, and that's Liliana Rivero. Resilience, Daniela Valle Dodano. Learning styles, Evelyn Wanzer. Golden Retriever Energy, Zoe Wontowicz. I'm gonna start off with our MVP award. And this is person, and ironically, you're gonna hear something similar between these three awards, which is, again, for everyone on the team, but in these three particular, is really hard. Someone who's always willing to run their heart out um, at both levels, Cassie Dion. One of the wonderful things about being a coach, especially getting coached multiple sports, is when I get to talk to other coaches, something that comes from the highest competitors um, is this idea of being a student of the sport. And there is no doubt this person is a student of the sport by constantly asking me every single day, what can I do more? What's going on? How can I do this? How can I do that, coach? And that is for the Dedication Award, Avery Filio. Award of Excellence. This person, without a doubt, not just with the sportsmanship, ethics, and integrity, they too would also rather run themselves into the ground and quite literally in some games give up a lung before coming off the field. And that's Zoe. Again, before I let them go, uh, I really can't say it enough, but I'm very, very proud of you, young ladies. And one of the things that we keep talking about is not just who you are now, but who you're going to be. So I'm not only proud of who you are now, but for who you're going to be later on. And I hope that all of you make the decision to come on back out and keep practicing, because some of you have such great talent, not just on who you are as a soccer player, but who you are as people. So thank you so much. Another round of applause for our GAV girls soccer team. Thank you, Coach. Now we have Varsity Girls Soccer with Coach Catania. Good evening. Before I start, there's a few people I'd like to thank. First, Ms. Wenner, thank you very much. All of your support this season um, meant a lot, not only to me, but to the entire program. Mr. Mish, thank you for all of your effort, hard work, making sure the fields are ready, prepared all the time. Thank you, Coach Feliz, for your dedication to our program. Um, you do a great job to ensure all of the student athletes are able to grow as soccer players, but more importantly, uh, as humans. Thank you, all the parents, fans, girls, for your effort and support. Thank you, Mr. Siaglo. It's not easy being an athletic director, um, but we're very, very lucky to have you here. Uh, so thank you very much for all the support you have for our program. Going into the season, I really was not too sure what to expect. Um, we took on a much more difficult schedule than we had the past couple of years. Our league changed a little bit. It was much more competitive but the girls really rose to the occasion. They took each challenge day by day. They learned from mis their mistakes. They learned from each other. They even took some time to learn from opponents. It's not every day you get to play against someone from the women's national team, like we did on Munson. Uh, but they all learned a lot from those games. Uh, they never backed down, they never gave up. That's a Laney Bailey quote. They held each other accountable. Uh, and always work towards a common goal. I've said this a lot to them this season, but this is the smartest team that I have ever coached. Um, their ability to take what we learn in practice and translate it to the game is truly unbelievable. They played like a team. 
day in and day out um, in a very complex style of play. Sometimes we were playing a 3-5-2 formation and sometimes they didn't even know it but we switched to a 4-4-2 or a 4-5-1 when we were doing up dog and you could ask them about up dog later. But they really, they're a lot smarter than they know in this sport. They learned a lot uh, from each other from I don't know, just showing up with grit every single day. As a result of their hard work on and off the field, we ended up being crowned the league champs. We were undefeated in the league and allowed only five goals against us in league play, um, having seven shutouts in the league, uh, which was an entire team effort. It was a direct result of the entire team doing their individual jobs at a very high level. So now I'm going to call them all up. Um, just hold the applause until we get everybody up here. It'll go a little bit quicker. Up first, we have Morgan. <laughs> Smartest team I've ever had. <laughs> Laney. Sadie. Cassie Dion, Olivia, Juliana is not here, Sienna, Fiden, Madele, Kylie. Chloe is not here. She is here? Chloe, you made it! <laughs> Aurora. Mush. Maggie Potter. Callie. Lily is not here, right? M Dog. Effie, and Hellcat. Now it's time for some awards. Stay up here. Uh, first, we have the Sportsmanship Award. This award goes to a player who can recognize and respect talent and her teammates, opponents, foster a fair and honest game, play with respect and responsibility. The Sportsmanship Award winner this season is Maggie Potter. So on top of the awards that we give out as a school, we had five players selected to the all league team. Um, we maxed out our selections. It's a very tricky process at the end of the year. Um, all the coaches of the league get together. They discuss who the top players were, but even if you go undefeated in the league, you only get five picks. Um, so within our five picks, the coaches of the league nominated nine different players, which made my job very difficult. I took myself out of the voting, and the coaches of the league ended up filling those five spots with the following players. Sadie Sear, Cassidy Mashinsky, Maggie Potter, Helen Vissis, and Olivia Earle. In addition to this, we had one player named to the All-State team. This is an amazing accomplishment, not only for this player, but for our team as a whole um, to be recognized at the state level. Last year, this player missed part of the season due to a concussion, leaving her out of the all league honors. Uh, she was visibly upset after the banquet, but set a goal that day to come back better than ever uh, and become an all state player. She used that as fuel, worked every single day, 
to come back. Um, and she was named to the All-State team. This is Sadie Sear. <laughs> Sadie will be receiving her award at the All-State banquet in a couple of weeks. Sadie is also uh, this year's recipient of the Leadership Award for all of her hard work and dedication to those around her uh, to match her intensity and grow with her. She's always one of the first to arrive and one of the last to leave the field. Congratulations, Sadie. In addition to this, we had a player selected to the All-Star Game. Uh, this is going to take place Monday night, 5 o'clock at Pope Francis. Cassidy Mashinsky, uh, who was unanimously chosen as the best defender in our league. She controlled our backfield, and she was the prime reason as to why we were so successful defensively. Uh, her communication and guidance to those around her, whether we were in attack or defending, uh, was second to none. Congratulations, Cassidy Mashinsky. Defensive, play <laughs> Defensive player of the year. Finally, we have the Coach's Award. Uh, this year, the Coach's Award goes to Cassidy Fiden. Prior to the start of the season, Cassidy Fiden broke her wrist, limiting her in her position as a goalkeeper. She didn't allow the injury to define her. She showed up every single day, ready to learn in a new, uh, new position. She asked questions, worked tirelessly to find ways to help her teammates from this new perspective. She supported M-Dog every chance she had in goal. Um, then Cassidy returned from her injury. She made a great save against East Hampton and unfortunately was out of that position again. Uh, most people would crumble at that point. You work five years for you know, this senior year in your favorite position, but Cassidy didn't. Um, she still continued to show up every day with a phenomenal attitude, pushing all of her teammates around her to be the best that they can be. Um, that's why she's this year's recipient of the Coach's Award. And in addition to this award, Cassidy was also chosen by the Western Massachusetts Co Coaches Association as the winner of this year's scholarship. So Cassidy will also be attending the All-State Banquet in a couple of weeks to receive this award. Congratulations, Cassidy. close us out. Um, this was one of the most difficult fall seasons um, between coaching this team, three other teams trying to plan a wedding. But when I was around them, it didn't feel like work. Uh, it felt like my time to have a break. I'd do it all again in a heartbeat. They're amazing kids. So thank you all parents. Thank you all team. Great job. And I'll see you next fall. Okay, on a closing note, I would just like to say what a crowd tonight, what a turnout. And that just goes to show that we have something special here in Hadley uh, from the, uh, as far as the support from the community and the, the people that are in the crowd right now. The last thank you of the, the night, I think, should go to the parents slash guardians, and I think that thank you should come from our student athletes. I think you should give them a nice round of applause right now. Okay, so now that moves us into the winter season. Um, we're ready to go, that's a Monday after Thanksgiving and we get that going. Uh, if everybody could just clean up your area and maybe we'll throw these, I'll get new ones for the next banquet, maybe we can just throw all these tablecloths away. Uh, congratulations, seniors, congratulations. And uh, thank you for attending and have a great night. <laughs>